Church Kira, live broadcast. We shall be starting shortly. Please stay tuned. Come 
This morning, Father, we bless your name. My Lord, we bless your name. For we are...
was your fall. And I was your fall. Still your love holds for me. That love that goes an extra mile. It keeps chasing. When I felt no worth, my God. My God, it was all paid for. Thank you for your kindness, my God. And you have been so, so kind to me. And all the overwhelming, never let me let this an assurance for each child of God. these words. No shot of you on light up, mountain you on climb up, come down to me. That's the congregation. Oh, no one you want. Declare it, declare it, sing it out.
own words. Praise him. Give him the glory. You're not here by mistake. You're here by the grace of God. Lift your hands in prayer. Lift your hands in prayer. Let's worship God. Let's praise his name. He has taken you through storms, through hills, through valleys, and you're still here today to glorify his name. Let's praise him. Let's worship him, Lord. For he alone deserves the glory. He alone deserves the honor. The fact that today is 31st January is known by power, known by might, but it's by the grace of God. Let's worship him in our own words. Let's praise him. With those songs in the background, let's praise him. Let's worship him. He alone is exalted. He alone is worthy of all the praise. He alone is worthy of all the honor. Oh Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. For you have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise to silence the poor and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your hands, the moon and the stars you have set in place, what is man that you're mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and you crown him with glory and honor. Father, we worship you, for your name is alone gracious. You're mighty, you're wonderful, you're magnificent. Father, you're exalted. Your name is high above every other name. Father, we worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, before I tell the ushers to welcome people and uh, the praise and worship team to sit down, let's open our Bibles, Job 14, verse 7. I'm using NIV. It says, At least there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again. And its new shoots will not fail. The time when I was really down in my life, I looked at this scripture and it was a point of encouragement. Whatever has been cut in your life, whatever the devil has set in your life, 2020, 2021, the years ago that have passed and you've been broken, there is still hope for your shoot will sprout again, for you will rise again. Let us trust God. Let us believe him that an ending is the beginning of a great and mighty empire for you. Let us worship him. Let us give him the glory and the honor. And I want you to go home and think about this. That when it's new shoots, they will never fail. When it shoots up again, it will never fail. So you will not fail again. If the devil has hit you once, he will not hit you twice. Let us praise him. Let us give him the glory. Let us give him the honor. Amen. Praise Jesus. How many of us are happy to be in the house of the Lord? I've ever tried to sing, but I failed. So I want to appreciate the praise and team, the praise and worship team for leading us. Let us clap for them. Clap harder. Singing is a, is a talent, it's a gift. When our voices, I tried, by the way, I think like 10 times, but I failed. So I rested in the Lord by worshiping in words and not in song. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise Him. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. How many of us are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Eee, someone is not raising their hand. Amen. For those who are glad to be in the house of the Lord, we praise Him. We give Him the glory. We give Him the honor. And uh, we don't take it for granted. This is Deliverance Church, Shira, and we are all glad to be part of it. Amen. Amen. Let me introduce myself first because um, I think it's my first time standing here in, in this. Yeah. Or some of you have seen me with only the, I think only the eyes because we've been wearing masks. Yeah. And, um, but I'm a simple young youth. I'm thinking. Yes. And, um, uh, <laughs> Okay, I'm by the name of uh, Dr. Maria Goretti Nachonyi. I specialize in making people's smiles better. But the most important thing is that I'm a daughter of God. Amen. Amen. 
Let us praise God. It's wonderful to be a daughter and a son of the Most High God because he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Uh, is any of us worshiping with us for the first time or the second time? Uh, let's praise God for our sister. You can stand up. Uh, we are in COVID, but you can welcome her in the COVID way with the flowers. You're welcome, sister. Praise God. This is Deliverance Church, as I said. It's a born again church with sound doctrine. Don't get scared. You can make that seat your permanent seat. And uh, after church service, you will meet the ushers in the tent and they will tell you more about this church. We are welcome to have you and feel at home. Amen. Let's clap for our sister who has joined us for the first time. Um, because of, uh, of time, we shall have the announcements at the end of the service. And uh, I've been blessed by the teachings we've had on mentorship and discipleship so far. Personally, I've really been touched. Dr. Amsenero, I'm really glad that you're ushering the youth into this. And last service, who was here last Sunday? We are told to bring notebooks. How many came with notebooks? Okay, the numbers have dropped. Yes, but it's a very, very good session, and I want us to be blessed when we listen to the wonderful lady of God. Let us join our hands and welcome Dr. Msenero, Monica Masanza, to share with us. Thank you so much for observing the SOPs. He makes sure that we are safe. So we appreciate the work that you're doing. Praise the living God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I will not assume that everybody knows me, but I'm first going to request to remove my mask. There is sufficient distance, and I have my dedicated microphone. So for you to know my face, uh, soon solutions are coming. Soon we shall be able to walk without masks, but... Uh, for now, we have to have them. Uh, forgive me for that, <laughs> because I, 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 say, I, I say that it happens and it happens. Praise the living God. Uh, I noticed that, uh, let me just, for my view again, get an idea. How many people were here last Sunday in any service, any of the services? How many were not here? because I want to know if I need to recap some things for you. I think you are in the first service, so you, I have some people. Okay, I'll just give it a one minute, uh, two minute recap. We are going through systematic um, discipleship. It doesn't matter how old you are. I was telling people that uh, a few years ago, it is a few years ago when I went to university. <laughs> but anyway, when we were at Makere University, we went for uh, a mission in Kapchora, and there was this, uh, this gentleman. He was like in his 60s, but he would climb mountains of Kapchora. Anybody who comes from Kapchora or who knows Kapchora? My friend, you are always working at above <laughs> 45 degrees going up. And this guy was just so, we used to call him Mosaic Jana. Because for, he would be the one leading us to where we are going, the church, we are going to the villages where we are going to evangelize. So I am also Mosaic Jana. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh -uh. Because you know, in my father's kingdom, age, we die at 900. Have you ever seen the age, how when people died in the, in the in Genesis, how long did they live? Yeah, that, so we, we, are, we are very strong. I'm still very, very young. So last Sunday, uh, we introduced the foundations, trying to make sure that all of us understand. And those of us who understood at the beginning, we have been here for many years, but maybe some things have gone through. So we're going through systematic um, understanding of our foundations so that because there is somewhere we want to go 
and we will not be able to successfully go there unless we understand these things. Because if I want to build an army, I begin by training an army. If I don't train the army and just gather some people and take them, some might shoot at us. So we, all of us, have been called for a reason. So last week we introduced redemption. What does redemption mean? What does it mean that we have been redeemed? Uh, for us to understand it properly, not just to know, many of us know, and we could look this up in the dictionary, but do you understand its implication for you? Do you understand what it implies that you have been redeemed? And does it have an effect on how you live every day? I do not fear what people fear. Because what, what, does, what do they fear in my father's kingdom? The definitions, the words change. So when we have understood that, we'll start to live at a higher ground. We'll start to live those, those practical things. So redemption is paying a price to repossess what you had. And usually that price is very high. If they kidnap your child and uh, the kidnapper's name a ransom, you, you can't even put a price to the child. Usually they gauge by what you can afford. And, and they take it a bit higher because, so if they know that you can't afford 20 million, they will say, we want 30 million. So that you know this is your child. They don't deserve you to pay anything to them, but they have kidnapped your child, and your child is priceless. Uh, last Sunday, I was telling the story of my piece of land uh, and how I had to pay 40 million for a piece of land possibly worth less than 10 million, but because it was so precious to me. Now, because God created us as his own, to carry out a particular purpose, and that purpose is to be carried out in a love relationship with him, and we fell. Basically, we were kidnapped, and we got trapped in a system where he could not relate with us. He paid the price, the heavy, hefty price, and that price was really high, and he redeemed us, the price is usually called a ransom. We don't even call it a price. We call it a ransom. Now, this price has been paid literally for everybody in the world. For everybody, the most wicked, the most a person who has never known about God. It's not just for me. It's not just for you who is seated here in church. But all those evil, wicked people, God has paid the price already for them. But today we are going to look at salvation. What does salvation mean? Many of you say, I'm saved, I have salvation. But what does it mean? One, are you able to convincingly explain it to other people? But two, do you live your life in the understanding of what salvation actually is? Now, redemption covered us. Uh, the blood of Jesus is the only blood. We shall have a session talking about why Jesus and why it is his blood. I wanted us to understand what these processes are. Before we go back to our key uh, questions, uh, that, that he paid this precious blood, which is unlike any other blood. You, you could die on the cross, but your blood will not mean anything. His blood was special. So he pays that price. For everybody, but God created man in his own image, and that means choice. Man is the only creature who has a say before God in what happens to him. Because God is a God of choice. He makes choices. So he gave us his nature, and he gave us responsibility. So he has paid we were captured by the devil. We were taken out of God's presence. And now he has paid this price. But not everybody knows it. Not everybody understands it. Not everybody is benefiting from it. So what we call salvation 
is that component of redemption where the rescue takes place. You imagine somebody has been, uh, let's look at a plane hijack. Sometime um, when many of you, maybe even your parents were not yet born, we had a, a wonderful president called Idi Amin. And one time when the Palestinians hijacked an Israeli plane, he allowed them to come and land it in Entebbe. The Palestinians uh, have conflict with Israel. So they brought, so they hijacked, so everybody on that plane was a hostage. And they were, the Israel had to come and rescue their people. Now, that process, you know, they planned the mission, they had to spend 90 minutes, I think, 90 minutes in Entebbe. I, there is a film, 90 minutes in Entebbe. Whether it tells the whole truth, we don't know, but they came and rescued their people. So, of course, the, before rescue, the first thing was to go and make sure the enemy cannot come. So they contained the enemy. The hijackers were busy celebrating with the then president, and these people came and took over the place where the plane had been. So redemption had come. You understand me? But now they had to remove those people and put them on another plane and fly them back to Israel where they belong. Unfortunately, there was one lady who had been injured and she was in the hospital and they rescued everybody except her. Now, salvation is that process of coming. If we can imagine, I don't want you people to get the wrong image, but if we, let's imagine that this is where Satan was holding us hmm, in this place. And Jesus comes and pays the price for everybody of us in here. And he wants us to go back there. Now, salvation is the time when you accept. You reach out your hand, put it in the hand of Jesus, and say, walk me to my father's house. Hallelujah. That, that simple act when we say, uh, I receive you, as my Lord and Savior. You are basically accepting his offer that he has rescued you. There are many who will not accept this offer. Some people have not heard about it because God gave us that responsibility that we must tell people and help them to understand. Others have heard, but they have not understood the, what that exactly means. They feel they are not redeemable or they feel it's too much. Uh, I had a classmate, uh, he got saved when I was in fourth year in McHillary. Then when we were about to leave, he, told, he came to me because I was the chairperson of the fellowship. He was very nice. He came to me and said, you know, Monica, uh, salvation is good, but uh, at, I cannot, in this Uganda, I cannot live with the salvation out there. He, he didn't feel like he want, because he still wanted to live in the world. He didn't think that, he, th he thought it would be such a bother. While others, yeah, that one, they have bonded. They have bonded. And we have that um, uh, in social or psychology, we call it the Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, the Stockholm Syndrome is uh, if somebody kidnaps you, you bond with them in such a manner that. Uh, when rescue comes, you even want to stay with the one who has captured you. It has been seen in hostages, and if, for example, kidnappers hold people for long, those people might refuse to be rescued because they have bonded, they have developed love for their captors. So many of us have developed love for our captor. Some people have developed love. Even some of us, even when we are born again, we are so attracted by what the captor was dangling to us that we don't want to go very far. We want to keep uh, at the door. So Jesus walks in here, comes and rescues you, and, and says, and who is willing? I've paid the price, who is willing? You put, he walks you, and says, that's your father's kingdom. Now go in there. 
That is the process of salvation. And it's not only that, but when you, we are born again, when, that is that process when we accept, we call it being born again. Why are we being born again? Because you were in here, you were a child in here, you were working the works of the devil, you were serving this kingdom. We only enter kingdoms by birth. Hello? So that's why Jesus told Nicodemus that unless a man be born again, you enter the new kingdom as a baby. You enter as a child. Why? Because your genes have to be changed. Your genetic nature has to be changed. Because naturally, we are born sinners. We are more drawn to sin. But the blood of Jesus comes and transforms us and gives us a nature that is no longer a slave to sin. And we are born into the kingdom of God. And when we are born there, it is expected that we will grow into there. That's why the scripture that we introduced last Sunday, saying just as you accepted Christ, continue to follow him, rooted and built up in him. So because now when you stand there at the door, you have left this. You have left the den. Unfortunately, many of us reach the door. Uh, okay, the door is there, and uh, we turn. What's happening in there? Hey, guys, you're still in there. What fun is there? Hello? Uh, wh what? And the devil keeps dangling tri trinkets. Eh? Trinkets, things which look like they are so precious, but they are worthless. He keeps showing, come, come, you know, <laughs> come on, come on, come back here. And the issue is, rarely are we understanding the kingdom where we have been born in. Many of us know more about what is here in the devil's kingdom than what is in our father's kingdom. Am I lying? No, we know more about the effects of sin. We know more about, you know, the curses, the demons. The, it's good to know, but if you really walk very far from that door into the kingdom of God, it won't matter. Those things won't matter because they cannot reach you. They can't reach you because you're so far. The reason we suffer most of the things we are suffering is because we are just standing there. Let me just illustrate it. Um, the other time in the morning, it squeaked a bit. But let's imagine this is where we were in the world. And this is my father's kingdom. So when Jesus saves us and rescues us, he doesn't just give you salvation and you sit there. He's taking you to a kingdom. So the majority of us stand a little here. So we are in the father's kingdom. But uh, hello. Hello. Is there anything following me? We, we have only two eyes, and they're on one side of the head. You know why? When you're born again, you march away. The devil is shouting, hey, do you remember your back? Do you remember that you are weak? Do you remember that you're a liar? Do you remember? Bye-bye. It might, if you are near here, you might even remember. You might even lie. But that has been covered. It has been covered in redemption. There is a process called forgiveness. Once you are redeemed, you repent. That process of turning and facing that way is called repentance. You turn away. You begin to live for something. That's why Jesus says, seek ye fast the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first what? The kingdom. So when we, when we that process of rescue, that process of walking away from who you were into who you are now, of growing into who you are now. Let's take a newborn baby. Uh, for the nurses and midwives and doctors who birth children, 
Once a child has left the womb, if you try to put back that baby in the womb, the child will die. Hello? Want it? The doctors. Can a child who has been born go back into the womb? The child, if they go back, they will die. So if you stand there, oh, I, you know, I, it's because of the way we understand. Many of us understand the gospel as um, uh, this rare thing which comes to, to, to really protect you from this extremely dangerous environment. My sisters and brothers, the devil has nothing. The day I discovered that, the devil does not own anything because everything that exists was created by God. Uh, show me any scripture which shows that the devil created anything. Show me anywhere in the Bible that the devil brought, created something and it came. The devil can only spoil what God has created. And once you understand that, he will give you, you know, he will never, he will not try as long as you're looking this way. He will keep showing you. You know, when we are children, eh? they give you either, you know, it was almost impossible for us to have a full chapati. So, but if you get your one eighth eh? <laughs> of the chapati, you hide it under the leaf, the banana leaf as you are eating. Then at the end of the meal, when everybody has eaten theirs, you pull out yours and you keep biting a little. Gombio. Gombio. You know, like the devil is like that. He tries to tantalize you to attract you. And the most of what we suffer and the limitations that we suffer as Christians is because we are standing there facing this way. So we are living our lives as missing what we have left other than what we have been called into. Brethren, if you turn your back and face into your kingdom and seek first that kingdom, then everything which you could not even see, which you could not never reach when you stay in here, there's so much more because the devil has access to a very small percentage of what God created. A very small percentage. And even in that, he can allow him only to have a little. Actually, when after we st we studied this with my family, the conclusion by one member is that the devil is just a glorified warden, a prison warden, who is guarding a prison whose doors have been opened and they cannot close. So anytime the prisoners are free to do what? To walk out. They just need to accept Jesus and Jesus is always calling. So salvation is that process of taking us from that miserable state and walking into our father's kingdom and beginning to learn what is in our father's kingdom. The reason most of us have been saved for decades and we are miserable is because we have not made effort to learn what's in our father's kingdom. We are looking at ourselves relative to what was. You know, I'm looking at myself, oh, I am not sick. I thank God I am not sick. Because this side, you see the sickness. What about if you came to this side? Have you ever had one single day that Jesus fell sick? Have you ever? What if your beginning is that there is no sickness? What will it look like? Or what if the beginning is that there is no poverty? We are looking, oh, I am able to do this little job, and I thank God that I can pay my rent, because on this side, we were really lacking, and now we are interpreting ourselves, so we are looking this way, <laughs> at least I'm better than that one, you know? I am better than you. But you are a princess. You are the son and daughter of the Most High God. And he's there saying, come closer, son. Come closer, daughter. But you are still here. Your feet are not allowing you to move. Salvation helps us to move further and further and deeper and deeper into our father's kingdom, into our father's house, into our father's riches, into our father's health. 
And he has a purpose why he has called you. And he has prepared. That's why Paul said, no one has had, no one can even fathom what the Father has for us. And many of us imagine it is in heaven. No. You are supposed to experience it here. Heaven is our final place. Actually, the moment I walk out there, I start my journey in heaven. And when I've finished this leg of heaven on earth, he receives me and says, well done, good and faithful servant. So that is salvation. That is why anybody sitting in here, however a feeling of comfort they are, Anybody sitting in the place where they have not accepted redemption, those people are going to waste their life on earth. The tragedy is not that they will go to hell. The tragedy is that they have no chance of fulfilling the purpose for which they were created while on earth. They have no chance of knowing that uh, they have been shortcut. They have no chance. They are going to live for cheaper things like money, like these worldly riches. Yesterday I was asking myself, who decided that gold was the most precious thing? Who decided? Huh? Who? You know, I, as I've been reading the history of economics because my children are so interested, so I have to talk with them, so I try to read. There was one time where this flower called the tulip, it's a flower mostly grown in Europe, Poland I think is the biggest producer. That flower was hyped, it was so expensive. Then one day somebody woke up and said, this flower is useless. And everything, the world economy has collapsed. But when we have understood salvation, we walk into our father's kingdom and we begin to see real value. What is the real value? What's the real wealth? What's the real health? What's the real purpose of life? Do you understand me? Are you following me? So salvation takes us from this position where we were, we were damaged. Our thinking is wrong because we are thinking. That's why the Bible tells us do not conform to the pattern of the world. The moment you start to conform to the pattern of the world, and I want to speak to the young people, what you have judged as right and standard and good is built on the pattern of the world. And its worth stops just there. Our Father's kingdom has defined for us a higher and most excellent standard. In that standard, we shall discover what is good, what is, uh, what is wonderful, what is, which you, once the moment you reach there, you begin to understand. So salvation is that rescuing process. You have a role, you have no role in redemption. Because the price has been paid. And Galatians chapter 2 tells us it's by grace we have been saved. You cannot add. You cannot make yourself better to be worthy to be saved. You cannot. Because you could not. Simply you can't. You can't. Because what can you do that can make you better? You can't. Jesus said we can't even make one hair Eh? Can we turn any hair on your body gray? No, we cannot add. That is a finished work of Christ. Salvation, we have a role in cooperating with Jesus. We make a choice. We choose to walk. And he, re he, redeem, he saves us from the den, but he also begins to save us from the effects that we suffered. You are a liar. You became a liar. He, by grace, he's not going to throw you back here because you have lied. Or maybe you are in some kind of habits, things you picked when you are here. When people are in prison, they pick a lot of vices. They imbibe a lot of what happens. So there is that process. 
there is that process of reconstruction, of redesigning us. To, and if we fail, we are children. We are children. And when you look at uh, uh, the story of the prodigal son, he was a spoiled brat. I'm sure his father tried his best. But then he left and he did the most hideous mistakes. But the moment he took that decision and was within sight of the father, when the Bible says when he was still afar, the father saw. And the father said, he didn't need you to be first. Him to, actually, they says he went and hugged him. The first thing to do was to hug you. Was to hug him. You're fully accepted. You're fully loved. You're fully my son. Even the son was saying, oh no, daddy, I have let you down. I'm not fit to be your son. He was like, shut up. Come here, son. Come here, my son. And he loved him. And he embraced him. And then he commanded, oh, now, you know what? Take off that, that filthy gown. Put a finger. Let's go celebrate. So salvation takes us out of the den. And it places us and helps us to stand so that we can seek his kingdom. And it walks and accompanies us as we are washed. As the sandals are removed, the ones which were in the piggy sty, we are replaced, and we walk because the Father wants us to walk at a place where we see who He is. Because we, unlike the devil, God wants us first to see Him before we see what He has. Hello? If we want to bypass God and reach what he has, it's not going to work. Because he is the one who will take us to what he has. The majority of us, we came to Christ, we want money, we want a job, we want healing, we want status. And we are really, you know, and many people who try to do that, they become aberrant. They become aberrant. They begin to charge people. Oh, you know me, I can reach God for you. When I pray for you, my prayer. <laughs> my prayer. Uh, if you want a big prayer, one million. If you want a small prayer, you stay there. Give a balinomu tuaro. Muvera o tugenda kuba sindikiro mukisa. Guarina million yanguano. Bakuseko mukono. Salvation is free. It is free. It has been fully paid for brother, sister. You don't need to go to some special place. And the things that you are looking for that are taking you into those places, they are resident. They are no more business in our Father's kingdom. Praise the Lord. Do you understand me? Are we together? Do you see it? Do you see what I mean? The reason we are not seeing what the Bible says is because most of our saved life, we are living just at the door, struggling not to fall back. And by the way, so long as you accepted Christ, just keep, you will get there. But your life will be of no consequence here in the kingdom. It will be of little consequence. God has big plans for you. Big, big plans for you. That's why he paid such a hefty price. And if you accept it and walk and come, let's put a line today. First, I loved the worship songs here. I'm no longer a slave to what? I'm no longer a slave to fear. The devil can do nothing to you when you are walking in the kingdom of God. He cannot reach you. He cannot touch you. Because you are smeared by this slippery blood of Jesus. 
And when he tries to hold you, he will try. He can, hey, 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 you see, ha, ha, ha. Now, you see, you did this. Father, forgive. The blood is there. It has covered that little hole where he could touch. And he is, I'm determinedly walking. And he's trying. Ah, ah, ah. The further he go, he deeper into the kingdom, the less he will be able to touch me. The reason we live a life different from what is described in the Bible is because we have not walked deep into the kingdom of God. And our father is beckoning. Praise the Lord. Let's stand up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are no longer slave to fear because the fact that you are in this church is a testimony that you have put your hand in that of the Redeemer. And you have been taken out. And we have an obligation to speak to as many people to help them understand. The Bible says, how will they believe if they have not been told? And how will they, how will they hear if they have not been sent? So this is not some uncomfortable demand of the church that we evangelize. It's an act of love for those around us because they are going to waste life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you, Lord, that even in our miserable state of weakness, when we were helpless, when we were wallowing in really hopelessness, you sent Jesus. You sent your son, your precious son, begotten, the only one with the pure blood that could wash us, that could cleanse us. You did not spare him, but you sent him. But Lord, we also thank you for that grace that as the Holy Spirit touched us, we were enabled to hear and to accept, not by our works, but by your grace. But Father, now help us to understand that we have been born again. We have left the place where the devil rules, and you have called us to walk into the kingdom where you rule, and that things operate very differently there, that there things operate very differently. Your standards are different. Your ways are different. Your values are different. The Lord, as we enter, as we begin to walk deeper into the kingdom and understand what you have in store for us, we shall look at everything as rubbish. Everything else that attracted us, we shall look at it as wastage. We shall look at it as filth because we have beheld the one who sits on the throne. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's clap more for Dr. Msenera. A bigger hand clap for the Almighty God who has enabled her to share. So how many of us have been blessed by this wonderful sermon? Let's give God the glory. Let's give God the glory. At least I've been reminded of his redemption for us, the fact that he sent his only son to die for us. And it's a good reminder that no one can pay that price for a person they don't love. It's only God that did that for us. Let's give God the glory. And let's then we invite Pastor to have a word.
Let's clap, let's clap. Um, Church. This is Sarah Datema, your news host this morning at the Reverend Siachira News Desk. With me are my co hosts. David. And Shalom, how are you all doing? Hope you all are doing great. Hope you had an amazing week and welcome Woo! to Sunday with Sunday, Sunday Vibe. Vibe. These are our news headlines the church building projects, discipleship classes, evangelism. Let us hear from David. In details, we're going to be talking about the church building project. So you are all hereby encouraged to participate in this church building project in any way you can. Any way it can, can be through donations, through pledges, all ideas are warmly welcome. So please participate. participate. And about evangelism. Evangelism, guys, it's a yes, not a no. Like, seriously, bring a friend. Mary, they brought my bring friend. Bring a friend. I brought this friend just right here on my right side. So guys, she's here. I brought my friend here. So guys, please come with a friend. Make sure it is a must, like, pull them out from their house. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a friend. It can be yeah. an uncle, an auntie, an auntie. a cousin. You uh, know, uh, name the person, bring the person. Neighbors, by the way. Neighbors have those tendencies of just chilling there at home and they just look at the windows. Tell and they're, about like, it. they're all like, mm, 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 mm. Uh, in, Anyway, but seriously, guys, it's a must for us to bring friends here at church. And then, talking about the church teachings. So here at Deliverance Church, Kira... Every Sunday we have discipleship and mentoring teachings by Dr. Monica Masanda Mustenero. So you are all hereby encouraged to come and attend these teachings and Same. pick a leaf. Pick a leaf, like guys, those youth who sit home, they are old, but they're just there looking at their phones, guys, please. Exactly. We need new leaders. You we know, need to empower this church. Tell me about I it. <laughs> just mm. come, listen, enjoy, and yeah. just in the spirit you know uh, trust me you'll get blessed last exactly. sunday i was just amazed by the way she amazing and wow. don't forget it every sunday every sunday and that's all for today and that's all for today stay safe stay blessed big ups always remember to wash your hands sanitize and always wear your, wear your mask that is all for today till next sunday god bless back, back to sarah. sarah thank you for listening see you next week bye There are baskets for thanksgiving, for tithes and offerings, for building, for compassion. A cheerful giver is what God needs. Amen. Let's welcome Dr. Eriso. Let's humble ourselves as we pray. Just give thanks to God for that which He has deposited in your spirit. It's always great to be grateful. Father, we thank you for what we have learned and for what you will teach us. We say thank you. We bless your holy name and we honor your holy name. We want to dedicate our lives this day as we begin a new week that may your grace and your light shine upon us. Thy wisdom manifest upon us and thy grace manifest upon your church that we display your nature. 
for the glory and the honor of your name. Even that which is before us and that which we are going to offer, Lord, we ask you to bless it and to bless everybody that we may be able to contribute and build the kingdom of God. Father, we worship and honor your name. We thank you for this day. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give a hand clap for that beautiful prayer. So again, I'm reminding you as we get out, we offer in those baskets that have been designated by the ushers. Uh, let's all stand up to say the grace. Hello friends, welcome. This is a new year, 2021. Thank you for joining us. It has been an amazing time. 2020 is gone and 2021 is here. And your teacher Isaac is back again. Join us as we do this together. Could you please help yourselves and we pray. Those of you who are watching us, I know you cannot see us right now, but I'm seeing you somewhere, somewhere there. Get ready and call your friends and say, it is time for Sunday school again. And let them be ready as we pray. Could you please humble yourselves and we pray. Lord our God, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for 2021. As these boys and girls are listening to you, Bless them and give them your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for praying. And tell your friends now and say, it is time to jump and dance for, it is time for Sunday school. And we are going to dance together. And we welcome the praise and worship to lead us into this session.
thank you for that praise and worship. It has been an amazing one in 2020. Did you dance? Did you jump? Did you enjoy yourself? That has been so good and that is wonderful. Now, I have a wonderful story for you. Story, story, tell your friend that it is story. All right, now, be attentive. Once upon a time, there lived two families. I tell your friend, say, two families. And one family had very many people and they are very rich. The chips was there, the chicken was there, they could afford to go to school. But there was one disappointing thing that they could not have. These people were not happy. They are always disappointed, they are very miserable, they didn't have hope, they didn't have love one another. Guess what happened? One evening, these people, they were having a wonderful meal. There was chips, chicken, rice. And do you know what? These people started quarreling among themselves. And when they started quarreling among themselves, do you know what? These people stepped into the sauce and the food fell off. And people lost the soup for chicken and the chips. Everybody was running and was running away from the food. And people lost it. Now, these people lost everything that they had and things were not working out. And what happened next? Those people were very disappointed. They studied, but they never had peace among themselves. And now, the second family. The second family, these people were very poor. They didn't have money to go to school. They could not eat chips. They could not eat chicken. But God was there for them. Now, the neighbors started asking their friends. They said, hey, you people, are you happy? Everything is so good. You are always happy. You have hope. You are excited. But at our home, people are always quarreling and fighting. And we miss food. People step into the food and they think, fall down. And when they fall down, for us we don't eat. But for you people, you are always happy. What is the secret behind? One of the friends told them and said, Do you know what a secret we have? We have God and Christ in our lives. And that is why we have hope and that joy you can see. So, those two families, which one will you go for? Will you go for the rich family or will you go for the poor one? And in the poor family, they didn't have shoes, they didn't have everything, but they're always happy. And God answered their prayers and always something was good and we are very excited. Now, that one introduces to us to our today's lesson. And our lesson is about thanksgiving. Everybody say thanksgiving. And thanksgiving is this is a way of thanking God of what he has been able to do for us. Guess my brothers and my sisters, dear boys and girls, we must thank God for 2020 and as we are on a new year 2021. And we have three things we are going to thank God for. The first one is we are going to thank God for the Lord's protection. The Lord has protected you and me and all of us in our families. You remember the story of the two, those two families, of the family that was very rich and the other one that was very poor. You see always those poor people, God protected them, kept them very alive. And we all also want to thank God because he has kept us alive. Are you still alive? If you are alive since last year up to today, you have a reason to thank God. That's one point which I want to request you all those boys and girls to thank God for. Number two, we are going to thank God for his provision. You remember that poor family? They could only afford to eat one meal. You can guess. They missed breakfast. They missed lunch. They missed evening tea. They could only eat some. You can imagine. Can you imagine? Can you miss breakfast, lunch, and you only eat supper? That is how far God has been able to do. But did any one of you during this particular time, did you miss supper, breakfast, and lunch, and evening tea? God has been so good. So, number two, thank God for his provision. 
He has provided food for you and me. And we are so grateful and happy about it. And number three, we must thank God for the good health you have during this particular time for coronavirus. Coronavirus has killed very many people. And that's why we are at home. Many are not going to school. We cannot come to church because coronavirus. Remember, the Lord has been so good. So remember to put on your mask. Keep yourself safe. Don't touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Huh? You should always wash your hands daily and you become clean. Don't just run from anywhere. Huh? Then you come and eat food without washing and you start <laughs> yawning for people. So be a good boy and girl and know the Lord has been so great to you. So we have said there are three things we are thanking God for. One, the Lord is protection. He has protected you. You and me. Number two, he has provided for you. You have never slept hungry. And number three, for the good health. And that one takes us to our memory verse for today. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 13. Everybody, you get your Bible and open up Romans, chapter 10, verse 13. It says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Repeat together with me. Romans 10, 13 says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. That's our memory verse for the week. And I have an assignment for you to do for me. I want you to do for me one or two things. And this is one. I want you to, this whole week, I want you to pray for God to give you more life. And number two, pray God to take away coronavirus so that we can be able to go to church and we may be able to go to school. Will you be able to do that as we come to the year 2021? This new year, by the way, happy new year. Some of you I have not seen you, but can I can wave to you, see you there where you are. And I know God has been so great. I see somebody there. I see um, uh, Mercy, I can see uh, Gloria, I can see Teacher Gibson somewhere also. They have grown and you're big enough. And thank you for growing. The Lord has been so great. And you know what? The year 2020, God has something good. 2021, He has something good for us. Would you be able to be part of it? Would you like to see what God has for you in the store in the year 2021? Don't miss out. There are some people, you remember our story about that whole family that was suffering. But there are some people out there that are waiting for you to send a message, the gospel for them. Would you like to be part of it? Would you like to see what God has for you in the store? Please don't miss. Come next Sunday and be waiting to see the great work that the Lord has been able to do you. So, may the Lord bless you, boys and girls. See you next Sunday. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these boys and girls. Bless them as they come in the year 2021. Make us to be good boys and girls that we can be able to remember you in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. Bye-bye.
Thank you, for watching, Deliverance Church Kira, live broadcast. Please tune in, next week, for another episode.